Hurricane Opal slammed into the northwest Florida coast at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, the worst of the storm crossed right here, right where I'm standing, at Navarre Beach. This was the hardest-hit community of any of the towns along the entire Gulf Coast. Yeah, they won't tear it down until we finish. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This is the story of my second-ever hurricane that I ever got to experience at the age of 10. And... We were in the right front quadrant, extreme eye wall, in Navarre, Florida, where the eye came ashore. Now, Navarre, Florida is in Santa Rosa County, Florida. It's between Okaloosa County and Escambio County, and in between Fort Walden Beach, Florida, and Pensacola, Florida, and Gulf Breeze, Florida. It's more in between Gulf Breeze, Florida, and Fort Walden. Pensacola is a little bit to the, to the west of uh, Gulf Breeze. Anyway... They literally renamed a portion of our beach here in Santa Rosa County, and uh, the, which is the extreme western portion of Navarre Beach, to Opal Beach. It's now known as Opal Beach because that's where the very small, compact eye of Hurricane Opal came ashore. And another reason they named it Opal Beach is because Opal was such an epic storm that they named the area of beach that it hit Opal Beach. And you can look this up. You can Google Santa Rosa County, uh, Florida, Opal Beach. You'll you'll find it. So three, and the crazy part is that this, this beach is drawn to hurricanes. Three storms hit this beach in the last 32 years as of June 11th, 2017. Now that, that beach that I'm talking about is Santa Rosa County Barrier Island, which is Opal Beach and Navarre Beach, which is basically the same beach. And that's where I live. So... Just keep that in mind. This is just crazy. And at the time, Opal, Hurricane Opal was the third costliest disaster in U.S. history at the time. Now, I still consider that record to be as much of a record as it used to be because, like, storms like Katrina that hit New Orleans. I mean, New Orleans is underwater, so of course it's going to be bad there. But if you actually compared Hurricane Opal to Hurricane Katrina at landfall, Hurricane Opal was a much more impressive, much more massive storm, and it would just take the trophy. So just because it was, a th you know, I'm just defending its rank. as At the time, it was the third costliest disaster in U.S. history. So the crazy part is it was two months after another direct hit from a hurricane, which was my first hurricane, Hurricane Aaron, and the cra and the both of these hurricanes came ashore on the same island, Santa Rosa County Barrier Island, which is Navarre Beach. Basically, the west portion of Navarre Beach is called Opal Beach. But Aaron came ashore on Navarre Beach, too, and we were in the northeast quadrant of its eye. So Aaron came in from our east, and Opal came in from our west. It's crazy. And these storms were two months apart, August 2nd and 3rd. Uh... 1995 and October 4th 1995 so and the craziest part of all is that I wished and hoped for both of these storms so much I was, I was a fascinated with hurricanes by the time I was seven and I wanted to be in one so bad I saw all these documentaries and these crazy you know cool documentaries on hurricanes and storms and I was obsessed and I thought about it every day and then I like wished and wished and wished and hoped and prayed and then all of a sudden you know two months apart I get my first two hurricanes Aaron and Opal so the craziest part of all is that, that it's like it. my wishes came true to the T, picture perfect. Like I, I'm talking, no, I've already explained, and I'll show, I'm going to put the uh, pictures of these storms up here so you can see, along with my actual location, how crazy and like how serious I am about how they came here to the T. Like we were in the eye, we were in the eye wall. Well, with Aaron, we were in the eye wall. <clears throat> And the eye was like right down the road, which is like even more extreme. Opal, we were about the same, <clears throat> maybe briefly in the eye for a moment, but not long. So it still to this day blows my mind. <clears throat> and at the end of this story, I will include a link to a video of the actual hurricane itself, shot by a storm chaser who traveled great distances to film Hurricane Opal because it was that big of a deal and like, as a storm chaser, this guy had to see the storm. So it wasn't no, like, piddly, dinky, little whatever normal storm. This was a 
an epic storm. So the video was shot 15 miles approximately from where I live and was during the storm. Somewhere around the 6 minute 40 second mark, 6 minute 45 second mark in the video, I believe is the peak of the storm. So I'd started at about, if you're one of those people that's impatient, but I suggest light one up, watch the whole thing, okay? But if you are impatient and you want to see the peak, go to the 6 minute 40 second mark. Okay, so I'm still to this day obsessed with the storm and Hurricane Aaron, my two favorite hurricanes of all time, and the memories that never cease to blow my effing mind in a good way. The storm blew meteorologists' minds, too. They were thrilled and made special comments about how impressive and unique the storm was, having an alarming amount of unusual lightning in its feeder bands and moving so rapidly and intensifying so rapidly. It all happened so quick, it was like it was overnight. It was really a, just in actuality a few days total that this thing went on in terms of being a tropical storm and a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. And I remember the morning of its pouring and flooding and lightning nonstop, and I mean nonstop thunder. There wasn't a second that went by where there weren't multiple claps of thunder tearing through the atmosphere. The sky was lit up, constantly flashing hellacious lightning bolts in the clouds and cloud-to-ground lightning. Hella crazy, like the end of the world type deal. And we're putting all our belongings in bags. I was. I was afraid everything that we had would be ruined. Well, I mean, we went to bed with this cat, too, that was the same strength as the hurricane that we were in two months before. That blew our minds. That we were all like, damn. And then we wake up to this monster that had winds of Hurricane Andrew and a lower pressure than Andrew. Opal's lowest pressure was 916 millibars. That's, that's like to the point where it's like insanity. And Andrews was 922, which was a little bit higher. So the lower the pressure, the stronger the storm. So Opal actually was stronger than Hurricane Andrew at one point, And it was so much bigger, too. It was like an Andrew that could have destroyed half the state the way that Andrew did Miami-Dade County, to put that in perspective. Opal was such a big storm that it affected hundreds of miles. It, it had sustained Category 3 force winds 100 miles from its core at landfall and it was you know much it was still impressive at landfall but during its peak it was much more impressive so i was i was still thrilled as hell about the storm regardless of how dangerous it was but i still knew that we were in trouble but luckily it tamed down a little bit before it came in and even though it was still the third cause of this disaster in u.s history it was only like it was like a quarter of what it could have been at one point, it was like four times stronger or something. I, mean, I don't know exactly how much, but it was so much stronger. So, you know, it, it didn't stop my obsession with having to see a hurricane of this magnitude, and it still doesn't. It had an eye of five miles at one point, which meteorologists commented on saying things like they've never seen anything like it before, and it was unprecedented, and it had unusual amounts of lightning. It's very rare for lightning to occur in hurricanes, and Opal just had nonstop lightning going on. And uh, Jim Camtori even commented saying he wouldn't be surprised if that was adding to the intensification of this thing. This thing was like a freak of nature. It was like I felt like I made it happen or something. It's insane. It had gusts of up to 175 miles, over 100 miles from its core at peak intensity. And it was just an epic effing masterpiece of nature. A radar loop of it took up the entire eastern portion of the United States. And I'm sure you'll see that here in this video because I'm going to make like a slideshow out of it. And at landfall, it was much less than its peak intensity so it would have been like the craziest thing anybody on the entire planet had ever seen if it stayed that way <clears throat> i believe i still remember the day of october 4th when it actually made landfall half the day people spent evacuating and running and panically freaking out everyone just woke up in panic freaking out running hitting the roads just leaving like crazy traffic jams and stuff people stuck in a hurricane on the road all that and the other half of it was waiting on the storm like if you were where you were going to be you know if you would uh, you were already like batting down and ready to go then and it felt like uh half the day the storm was getting stronger and stronger every report that came out it was like it was more and more and more intense and then right before it got it got here it slowly became less intense as it began bearing down on our little town and the rest of the panhandle as well being as massive as it was so it was such a massive storm the hurricane force winds arrived way before it was even close to landfall. So it's very plausible that higher winds tore through this area 
than what was recorded at the time the eye wall was coming ashore. You see my point? So without further ado, I'm going to encourage you to watch this Hurricane Opal video all the way through. Light one up. Really dedicate some time to it. It's going to be awesome. I'm so glad the Storm Chaser filmed it because I didn't have a camera at the time and to this day like the one of probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. I I love storms that much. So enjoy the magic of Hurricane Opal. <laughs> 